what is going on guys welcome back to another video we do actually have a winner for this beautiful third gen here it's thomas brow from wyoming casper wyoming congratulations on the truck win man you're gonna freaking love it this truck is so much fun to drive my wife tells me all the time honey 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 if i could have one truck to drive for the rest of my life it would literally be this 5.9 like it it is so nice to ride it looks really good, but it's not overkill. Like it's just like a perfect, comfortable, daily drivable truck. I'm like, I know that's what I've been I've been trying to tell these people that, but you know, some of them it just didn't get to them. I guess. Man, enjoy the truck. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Can't wait to meet you here to pick this thing up. It's going to be super cool. It's a stud truck. Anyways, guys, if you also would like to get entered to win a beautiful truck, we're giving away a 1997 flatbed 12 valve Cummins plus five thousand dollars cash. And the truck is going to be set up to work. If you want a comfortable work truck, this is gonna be the one for you. It's gonna have towing airbags, which we're gonna to try to work on today. Fully custom leather interior that you cannot get in one of these trucks from factory. And the way the truck is set up in terms of power and performance, it spools really nice at low RPM. It holds boost pressure very well. It would be a perfect, perfect work truck, tow truck. You're doing long distance stuff. It's, it's gonna be set up for that. So. Uh, get in while you can lmpgear.com just place an order and you're automatically entered to win if you want to get 20 times entries definitely check out those mystery boxes those get 20x forever if you sign up for one of those but here she is the 97 flatbed 12 valve she's a beaut she could be yours now i actually have not started this truck in several days now I'm telling you guys i'm telling you you want that truck you know you do don't be cheap some of you are like ah oh, man i just ugh. I don't want to spend five, 10, 15 bucks to win a truck because they you know I, could, I really want to pick up fast food on my way home tonight and it's just a lot of money. It's just, dude, 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 you could win a truck in five grand. Think about, think about how much more money you could waste if you had another five grand in a cooler truck to get you to places to waste some more money. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just, think about it. And I actually took some time this weekend to do a handful of things. One of those things was duck hunting, deer hunting, and the other thing was cleaning up the shop a little bit. And so this shop, it has enough room to easily work on one of our pickup trucks in here even a dually like a dually easily fits through this door i have the whistling diesel third gen on the huge wide you know american force dually wheels and stuff and it, and it pulled right up in here no problem but the thing is it was very unorganized because it, it's just one of those things that's hard to keep up on and i don't know why it is for me but it really shouldn't be that difficult because like when i get in a work mode and i'm like working on stuff I hate stopping to pick up as I go to take time to clean up and then keep working and then clean up when I'm done with a certain part of the job then keep working like it's just it's and when I'm done with a job if it was a stressful job that sucked I don't want to like stop and pick up around the shop for an hour to get everything cleaned back up and room the floor and so it just ends up getting dirty and staying dirty and it's just not it's just not fun so I took some time picked it all up the best that I could so now we should have plenty of room in here for some activities i cannot wait until we have a shop that's a shop shop the thing is like with this shop you could make things work but it's hard for me to want to put more money into it because we're not going to be living here much longer which you guys are just kind of have to stay tuned for all that I mean, who knows anything could happen but that's our intention so for me it's it's kind of hard to like want to spend money on like you know doing more steel and all this other stuff and putting a small lift in here and just because i know we're not going to be here that long and so it's kind of one of those things where i'm more like let's just suck it up use the space that we got and make it work and then here's the front view when you come in now there's actually some stinking room in here but yeah so we're gonna get the flatbed backed in here and then we're gonna get to working on hopefully the airbags we're gonna tear the kit apart and see what all we've got to work with make sure everything's there yeah pretty excited about it so if we sneak on through this Holy crap. If we sneak on through this door here, and we sneak on through this door here, we've got what we now are going to be calling the tractor shed. And this is where we're gonna be filming our tractor content. So for those of you who are excited about the tractor content, great. Um, I actually ordered some LED lights to be able to hang throughout here. And you know, hopefully we can do three or four in here and get this place super bright because this shed does stay pretty warm it's got insulation on the ceiling nothing heavy 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 duty but it helps and then an insulated garage door and so with keeping the wind out of here and having not it does retain heat in here pretty decent so hopefully we can use this as like the tractor shed to work on the alice chalmers it's not like it's not super roomy but it's plenty roomy enough to be able to work fully around this thing and uh, not have too many issues. So I got all this stuff 
that's where those extra shelves in the shop went. They came over here and I organized all of the gardening stuff, fencing stuff, and just everything in here and just organized it all the best that I could, horse blankets and uh, ankle wraps and stuff. And then um, there's plenty of room to work behind it. You can walk through here easy as can be. You can walk up and down the side of it. Super simple. Finally, we've got uh, an indoor designated area for the tractor, and we're just gonna call this a tractor shed for the tractor videos. I don't know how much tractor content we're gonna be filming or not, but if you guys like it, I can film more of it. If you don't, then I'm just gonna take my off days and uh, make progress on the tractor. But if you guys enjoy it, I'll make more for that. And it's hard to believe, but we're gonna actually hang some LED lights in here as well so we have some good lighting here to work on stuff because if i close this door like i will be in the winter when it's freezing cold lots of shadows it's pretty dark in here so not very fun so for now with this weather not being terrible yet i can just prop this door open give me a little bit of light and i can see things just fine but i'm excited for the next stages of life and being able to move forward with some stuff in terms of shop space so what we're actually going to do here first is unbox the firestone air spring kit see what all is here before i start taking the wheels and tires off this thing just to make just to make sure it's going to work because if it's not i don't want to have the wheels and tires taken off and jacked up and everything getting it all prepped and then find out can't even use it for some reason so let's get to looking into what we've got here I'm telling you these shadows not the best not the best We'll take care of it soon. Okay, we've got an instruction manual, some mounting brackets. I'm actually gonna lay a blanket on this flatbed so we don't make any, put any scratches in this work bed. Zip ties, got another bracket, a whole bunch of hardware and long bolts, lower brackets, air springs, a bunch of line for airing them up. Now we're gonna dig into this for a second here and I'm gonna make sure this is gonna work on the truck with the B&W hitch mounting brackets on the side of the frame and stuff. And it looks like it's going to work. We're going to move on. From what I read, a lot of guys were saying that they were still able to use this kit even with a with a gooseneck hitch mounted on the frame, because what this has to do is mount up against the frame. This brick has to mount up against the frame, and it has to mount literally where the hitch would be. So, a lot of guys, you know, have concerns about it not working with the hitch because you know it pushes it out, you know, about a quarter inch, you know, with that steel down there mounted on the side of it. So. Um, we're gonna make sure this is still gonna work just fine and we'll let you know what we do Well, we've got some beautiful weather here today This is one of those days I wish I had more music to listen to than raindrops on the steel This is where we're at with the progress of this. I actually have the um, airbags the brackets All put together and set on the leaf pack back there just to kind of line it up and once I got it side to side, right where it needed to be and fastened them down so they didn't move, tried to figure out exactly where they would need to land so the airbag would sit nice and level. The airbag wouldn't be like rubbing against any of the bolts there for the B&W hitch or rubbing against the bracket itself for the frame. And what it actually came down to was this. I'm actually gonna have to drill a 3 8 hole right here in the same spot on the other bracket as well uh, to be able to have the airbag sit there properly to be nice and flush and not rub on the bracket, rub on the bolt, rub on those bolts or rub on the frame at all. And it'll only give me about a half inch gap from the frame and the bag itself if I do this. So I have to go buy a brand new 3 8 bit that's sharp because my other one is not sharp at all and it's not, not doing anything other than the pilot hole, which I was able to do with a smaller bit, but um, I need a new 3 8 bit and then aside from that, the rest of the process should be fairly smooth. So let's go get that bet and get on back here. of the airbag kit done it took me about two hours uh, only because i'm going slow trying to make sure i'm doing it the best that i can and i think it's turning out really well and i'm going to explain to you guys a couple of things that i have to work with on this truck that i could not find 
freaking anywhere. I could not find any videos on YouTube of somebody doing an airbag install kit on a heavy duty that has a B&W hitch. I, I read in some forums, guys saying, no, you can do it. You're just gonna have to make some very slight modifications, but it'll totally work. And most guys were saying that, you know, the Firestone kit was probably the best kit to work with a B&W hitch and not interfere with the bags being able to work properly and being in the way or not lining up or whatever. So I did it the best that I could based on what I saw it was done with nasty reds and this truck comparing them side to side. And this is pretty much the best that I could get out of it. And I think it looks pretty darn good. But keep in mind, this is only one side of the kit done so far. And I'm gonna show you what I had to do. So the Firestone kit comes with the long bolts to run through here to mount, of course, um, for the trucks that do not have overload springs. Otherwise, they make a different kit that just mounts to the overload spring on top and then that's it. But since this one does not have it, it comes with these long bolts and brackets to do it like this. Now, my bag is as centered as I could get over this axle to be as perfectly aligned as I could. However, there's a few things that I had to work with that I just couldn't do much about. So like here's the B&W hitch uh, bolts for the bed. And so, you know, you can't really, I can't go over any further. I went over as far as I could to make sure that that bag was as centered over that axle as I could get. And that's as perfect as I could get it. And so I also had to drill my own hole in this bracket to be able to do that as well. Because if I would have used one of the factory holes that say factory it's not really anything factory but the holes that they already have drilled in the bracket it would work totally fine if you didn't have the bmw hitch but since i did and i had to try to avoid hitting that bolt and i had to avoid the bag rubbing on the frame at all i had to drill my own hole and then i had to use three of their washers which are designed to do this anyways three of them to space in between this upper hole on the back side towards the bumper of the truck in that little indentation in the frame, of course, that the second gens have, and then two of them on the lower one, and I'll explain why. So the B&W hitch itself is about exactly two of these washers thick. And so for the bottom, of course, this side, it's sitting on the B&W hitch, this bracket, and then back here, it's not sitting on the B&W hitch at all. So I had to do two of those washers on this side on the lower portion and three on the upper, because of course, this is sitting on the B&W hitch. This is sitting on the B&W hitch on this side. And then down here, it's not sitting on the B&W hitch and the frame is flush, just like it is back here, straight across. And then I had to do three on the upper because the frame is indented right up there on the second gen. So one more made the difference. So I did these two first. And then what I did for leveling it is I just made sure that this bracket was flush with this B&W hitch down here. And then I made sure it was flush with the bottom of the bracket here in the B&W hitch on that side. And that's how I installed it. And so, I mean, it's, it's just about as good as I could get it, given that I had to make some very, very slight modifications. Uh, but in terms of real changes, the only thing I added was a drilled hole right here, which I copied and I used as a template to line up perfectly to put the same hole on this bracket as well so it's going to be perfectly in the exact same spot on the driver side as it is in the passenger side so it's not any different at all to keep that you know airbag stability exactly the same side to side but yeah so then i got my airline ran up over top and it's zip tied to wires and stuff on the back side of the frame factory harnesses and then it comes right back here to where you got your valve for your passenger side and your driver side which i have not done the driver side yet but uh it's pretty slick because it's right there. It's easy to get to when you're hooking up your trailer. In my case, I use a 20 foot car hauler. That's a bumper pull style. So it's it's right here when you're hooking up your trailer, you can grab your air compressor, air them up, air them down, whatever you gotta do, depending on what you're hauling or not hauling. But yeah, that's how we did it. And uh, I think we should be in pretty good shape. And for the people that are wondering what the brackets are for, you know, you're probably wondering, well, what's the point of these brackets here? Do you need them? Do you not need them? If you don't use those, then the uh, bracket up top here doesn't go high enough to actually meet the frame. You'd have one of your holes like down here and the other one right here. So you gotta use these spacing brackets to make it to where your uh, mounting for the upper portion of the airbag kit is 
centered on the frame where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna try to show you this airbag for the driver's side a little more step by step. So you've got the bag here. There's two studs that come out of the top of the airbag for the Firestone air spring kit. And then there's these little valve pieces that come with valve fittings that come with it. You're gonna thread that one on but it's gotta be threaded on enough to where you can still get this bracket down on top of it. You're gonna have these two studs sticking out. And for this, you can just tighten these right on before you even put the bag down there because they only go through one set of holes so you can't mess it up. And you're gonna take your 9 16 Okay, now those are in place. And then for this, you're actually gonna run, according to the directions of the airbag kit, it says to put this lip that folds over. Your kit might be different, but if you're doing a Firestone, it says the lip that folds over like this for the bottom bracket faces in towards the center of the truck, inward towards the axle, okay? So, technically the kit's gonna go like this. And then we're gonna have our bolt. There's the hole that I had to drill, make my own. That's the only way it'll work on this truck, at least with the research that I've done. Just thread that bolt in there. Now this one do not tighten down until it is in position in the truck ready to go because you're gonna have to wiggle this top bracket side to side a little bit when you're centering it up flush against the frame and the bracket down there for the B&W hitch. So while you're mounting it up, leave it loose like this but thread it in enough to where that bolt's not gonna fall out. Then after your upper and lower bracket are fastened in position, then you can take your uh, 9 16 or your 14 millimeters just about the exact same and then you're gonna just take that under and it's easy to get to with your tire off and you can just tighten this bolt snug and that's just to position your bag on the lower portion so it keeps position where it's supposed to be. Okay, so we've got our airbag lower portion brackets in place and tightened down spaced out the exact same way that the other side is which is slightly more forward than back um, but that's to try to line this up the best that we can and also space it out properly with the bolts running through the b &W hitch and the rear portion uh, here as well and making sure that there's enough spacings that the bag does not touch the frame or any of the bolt heads coming out so uh, it should be about perfect where it's at which is really good so now we've got one hole drilled right there and one bolt ran just mostly snug not all the way tightened down and that is because we're going to level this out now with the bean w hitch back here which means we're gonna have to take this of course you can see this bracket is a little bit lower than the bean w hitch plate so we're gonna take this bracket and we're gonna bump it up just a little bit then we're going to take a straight piece of steel and make sure that it's flush with the bnw hitch because that's how we have the front lined up is flush with the bottom of that and then we're going to make sure that it's flush with the bottom of that and then mark where we're going to make our lower hole on that side then we'll proceed with drilling out the other three holes and fastening the bolts and putting them in the airline <laughs> So here we are. These projects always take longer than you think they're going to, but we got the other airbag installed on this side as well. Now we're gonna test to make sure they hold air. And I'm gonna put them at about, oh, I'm gonna put them at 30 PSI for now, just because we're not planning on towing anything really, really soon in terms of like, anytime like this week, we don't even have seats in it yet. So um, there's no need for it to have like a ton of air, but I wanna see uh, what happens when you put about 30 PSI in there. Wow, that was quick.
That one says that one's a 30. That one says that one's a 30 as well. Now. So now I'm gonna show you what this driver's side looks like with air in the bag. That is 30 PSI right there. They say you can do up to 70, um, but that's 30. There's no need for putting it at 70 with no intentions of towing right now. And this is what I was telling you guys about with making sure there's space to where it's not gonna touch any bolts and it's not gonna rub against the frame. And that's why I had to make some very slight modifications, kind of like putting that bolt in a slightly different position than the three slots that they gave you to choose from. Just because if I would have used any of those, it would have pushed that bag so much closer to the frame, causing it to rub. And that's just not something I wanna have to deal with because of course, if it rubs under a load, it's just gonna pop and then the bags are absolutely useless. And uh, like I said, you have to do, at least if you have a BMW hitch on a second gen with this exact kit, if you're gonna install it, you gotta do the three washers that they give you specifically for spacing if you need them on the top and two on the bottom for the rear half. And then on the front half, I don't have any um, because it's a flat, totally flat surface with the b &W hitch there. But yeah, there's the, there's the airbag kit on the driver's side. Nothing touching it. As centered as I could possibly get it while trying to work with the bolts over on this side and everything else. I mean, there's just, there wasn't a lot of options. That's as, as good as I could get it. And I think it'll be perfectly fine the way that it is right there. And then I've got those lines ran, both of them, right back to here. That'll be perfect and easy to get to to air up and air down. Check it out, guys. There's a little bit more clearance, which is nice. There's the bags. And it really does help with the truck too, to give it a little bit more clearance in the rear end. And guys, airbags are such an important thing when you're towing with these things. Like if you're doing heavy towing with these things, it really does make it such a nice ride compared to no bags. No bags, your rear end's gonna do a lot more of this when you're hitting bumps and stuff on an uneven road. This will kind of like help stabilize it. It gives it that nice cushion to where if you are hauling heavy, it doesn't beat up the rear suspension so much, which also beats you up in the cab because you're bouncing all over the place. So it really helps with a lot of different things, ride quality, ability to haul more in a safe manner. It just, there's a lot of benefits to it. And if you haven't gotten airbags on a truck and you tow with it a lot, or you plan on doing towing with it a lot, it's really a great investment. They're between three and 500 bucks, depending on what you buy. And they're well worth the two, three, four hours to install them, depending on your skill level and the tools you have on hand. And it, it could just make a huge difference with your ability to tow and work your truck. I might have had enough of this nasty rainy weather today. I had fun installing these airbags though. I got out here, started on at about 11 a.m., finished about 4.30. And that includes about an hour between driving to a hardware store, coming back, having to let batteries charge several different times and wait for them to charge a little bit to keep drilling through the frame and stuff. So yeah, scale one to 10, how hard is it? A five. It's not like difficult, but it's not an absolute cakewalk if you don't do this kind of stuff regularly. So, I mean, it's, it's really not difficult though. I mean, for most most of you guys, you can figure it out pretty stinking easy. Hopefully I was able to help you guys out for those of you who have a BMW hitch and you want to run this kit. If you guys have had another way of installing these with a BMW hitch, please let me know. I'd love to see what the other options could have been. This one's installed, looks good. 
and I'm super excited to test it out if you know what I'm saying. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you have not done so yet because we post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to enter to win this truck if you would like to get those entries. Every $1 is one entry to win right now, and this truck giveaway does end the day before Thanksgiving on November 24th. The giveaway for this truck is over. So get in while you can, just place an order, and you're automatically entered to win. LMPGear.com, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.